We're under caution, and Patty Moise is the reason why. The car went around at turn number two, and you can see heavy damage at both ends. Yeah, that one pretty well used up there, Daryl. Yeah, I don't even think Purex will get that out. Oh. Do they make a big hammer? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe wash it with dial? Yeah. I don't know, but I don't think it's going to work. Pit stops. A couple of daughters in. Jeff Fuller, Mike Wallace. Then a sensor came in. Here's David Green, Joe Bessie as well. Yeah. Sensor took on fuel only, so he'll be the first one on camera. I was, uh, I'm curious to know, uh, Larry McReynolds might be able to find out, if that 59 car is still a banjo car or not. Uh, it's a, they've run those cars in the past. Well, Patty sideways, watch this impact. Yeah. She hits hard, and then the front comes around and yeah. gets into the wall. Where she's sitting is even worse than hitting that wall, though. That that scare you to death, just sitting there and all that oncoming traffic. Yeah. You know, okay. She needs to be glad that wall is now concrete. Remember when Neil Bonnet was leading the race here in Junior's car, and it was it was double strand Armco, and he hit the wall coming out of turn two, and the car just stuck in the wall right like an arrow and stopped. That was 1985. He was leading the race. You were second, I believe. Uh, yeah. Dale won that race. I, Jeff rode down, run third, and I run, or second, I run third. Mm. I was on pole. So heavy damage, Patty Moise's crew trying to get her back into this race. We'll take a break from Richmond at lap 115. And oh. racing here under the green. Pace car is in. And Kenny Wallace hauls him down to the green flag. Johnny Benson is second, lap car of Bobby Hillen up on the outside. Mike McLaughlin moves to third after Dennis Setzer's pit stop under the caution. Terry Labonte in fourth. And Phil Parsons up in sixth spot. You see Johnny Benson getting a great start in the second spot there. He had to get by uh, Bobby Hillen. One thing ASA drivers don't do is ever make a bad start. Good point. Jason Keller's up to seventh. And Chad Little, the man who's trying to become the first ever to win the first three races of the season, he is eighth. You know, Daryl's dangerous to sit by. I thought I used my arms. He poked me two or three times when he started oh. three wide. Well, I was just wanted you to see what was going on, buddy. <laughs> no different than when you two are racing each other. Oh, God, got trouble. And around goes two cars. Oh, bad spot. John Tanner's 1-0. Oh, oh. Joe Bessie. Joe Bessie. In there. It wow. reminds me of last year here. Remember when that car came down off the wall and uh, somebody just ran right into them? I forget who it was. Greg Clark was the first car to spin. It is not Joe Bessie. Rather, it's the 0-5 of Steve Boley that tried the high side to get away from the spinning car of John Tanner, the Caterpillar car, and ended up running into the parked car that was already up there. Where did that 20 car go? Did he get a lap? That's the, uh, back. we'll check. That's the Curtis Key 0-5. Tough break for that team. Now there is Bobby Hillen. When he uh, when he up there in the mix, um, he was well ahead of the incident. There yeah. it is, back in the middle of the field. No, I guess I was. Greg Clark was that red and white car. And there you see the old five. Just couldn't get past. That's uh, about the second or third incident that the, the big cat car has been in. Yes. You know, Daryl, 10 years ago, that would have been a major incident right there. But with the great spotters and the radio communication, that would really makes racing a lot safer. They, everybody was yelling, watch this, go high, go low, telling them what to do. Yeah. Joe Bessie has a little bit of damage from an earlier incident. As he comes on to pit road, that Davidson team looking for a sponsor. Joe Bessie is the subject of today's Pep Boys driver profile. Joe Bessie is back, full-time on the Bush Grand National Circuit, and this time, he's a serious contender. Um, we're getting a lot of respect from the drivers on the track and even in the garage area now, and that, that means a lot. And people wonder, uh, it seems like every week, Dale Earnhardt's about somewhere between 30th and dead last, and in 15 laps, he's up front. Well, 90% of the reason he's up front is because he gets a lot of respect from everybody on the track. And, that respect is, I mean, you can have the best team and the best of equipment, but if you haven't got 39 other people out there that give you a little respect, your chances are you won't survive the day. That blank quarter panel look, lack of sponsorship, took Bessie off the circuit last year. But now he's teamed up with Pat Davison out of Delaware and is very optimistic. 
there's a lot of people over there that have been truly uh, supportive of me. They know what I'm going through, and they've coached, coached me to hang in there. Uh, Doug Yates, Robert Yates' son, last uh, week grabbed me and said, you've got to hang in there. You don't know how close you are to making it over here. Just hang in there. And that's, those type of things is what keeps me going. Our driver profile brought to you by Pep Boys for quality parts, tires, and service. There's a look at Joe Bessie in a Pontiac. Yes, yes he is. 123 laps are complete. Let's go to the Dennis Setzer pit. Here's Glenn. Ricky Pearson is talking to him right now, Mike. We'll find out. Rick, you elected to make a, ca a pit stop on that last caution for fuel, but uh, have you got enough to go all the way now? No, we don't uh, We don't have enough fuel. That's the reason we pitted. Uh, we can only go about 92 green laps, and we went 53, so you know, hopefully they'll go long enough for the other cars to have to pit under green, and maybe we'll catch a caution after that, and maybe get them lap down or something. Okay, so that's the strategy, folks. I wondered why he did that, guys, because I knew he couldn't go all the way, but that explains it. Right there is a lot of talent. I want everybody to know, Ricky Pearson, no matter where he goes, there's natural-born winners, and he's the crew chief that is a natural-born winner. There he was a pretty good driver, too, in the Baby Grands. He drove a car painted like Richard Petty's, and his brother Larry drove one painted like his dad's, the pure later car. Yeah, well, you could hear a lot of David Pearson in his <laughs> comments just then, and a lot of wisdom. Yeah, a lot. One lap to go, we'll go racing. Remind you that two of the biggest names in sports and entertainment have a major marketing alliance, Gaylord Entertainment, parent company of TNN, and NASCAR have teamed up to offer up Opryland USA as the official NASCAR destination. Since fans of NASCAR and fans of country music are the same people, that's its natural pairing. Opryland, now the official NASCAR destination. Yes, sir, March the 19th. We're going to be over racing those bush cars, too, and I'm going to be right up in the middle of them. Get except for the restart here. Darrell, you see him really whipping that steering wheel back and forth to get all the rubber and stuff off of the tires before the restart. Is that really important here, or with the, the way you go in the corner here, couldn't you scrub it off down the front stretch? You're in the turn, pretty much. Well, what happens during second gear on these restarts, if you don't have the tires clean, you'll spin the tires, and you'll get run over from behind, or you'll get a bad restart. So... That's part of the whole deal. I knew that. I just wanted you to say something. Oh, you set me up, didn't you? <laughs> 19 cars are on the lead lap as we go back to green. Kenny Wallace out in front of the field. Johnny Benson now underneath the number 55 of Tim Fito as we watch Terry Labonte. I was just fixing to say Terry Labonte is moving up through this crowd like you wouldn't believe. That car is really hooked up. That is not Terry Labonte as I was speaking just then, though. Uh, That's Elton Sawyer. Elton Sawyer there, but... Uh, just in front of them is the 14 car, and he is moving like crazy. Four lead changes among four different drivers. Five caution flags now for 25 laps. Mike McLaughlin's making a good run here today, too, y'all. He's right there in third place, and uh, his car looks really good. With Jim Bowden at 51 back on the speedway. What's and Mike that? Wallace comes around Belton Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, there's about to be a big wreck up here in the booth, and I, I don't want to be a part of it, okay? He keeps poking me. I wish he did. He's a lot bigger than I am. He knows he can whip me. I don't know why he keeps poking him. And I can't get him out on the track. That 63 car, that's Curtis Markham there under Mike Wallace. Making it three wide. Something out. Somebody's got to give there. Yeah, Markham's a lap off the pace. Let's move up to fourth place. 99, Phil Parsons coming up on Terry Labonte and Jason Keller, the budget gourmet, 57 right there. Boy, Phil Parsons got in there a little hot and got in the side of feet a while, moved him out of the groove. Uh, but when you do that, you don't really hit them. You just kind of help move them out of the place you need to be. Yeah, well, uh, that 99 car, is that's as good as this run this year, too, and he's making a good move to the front. Oh, and David the, Ift is crew chief on that car. you got to be kidding. Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious, got to turn two. One car, John Tanner, spun and got going again, no caution. So we'll stay with this battle. Here is Chad Lennon getting up to be part of it. He trails the 57 into the corner. Jason Keller, and there Keller got a little bit against Fido. Now, Fido is trying to move Fido over, or is it that eight wheels corner better than four right there? got a lot there? more side bites that way. Yeah. Fido is just really hard. He's giving oh, everybody a hard time. Contact you know, he's lap down, he's trying to, they're trying to pass him, and he's just making it hard for everybody. I think I thought Mike Wallace had uh, Chad Little set up for a pretty good crunch there, but uh, Mike did a super job of checking up just a little bit and giving a little room to Chad Little. 
And here Mike moves underneath Fedor. And Tommy Houston's part of this battle. He's in eighth place in the number six Red Devil car. Well, I'm glad to see him run good. Yeah. Uh, he has had a tough time. And that's a, what a great family. A great racing family. His kids all work on the car. Uh, the son drives there at Hickory. They're good folks. Scott worked for us last year and did a good job. Oh, Mike McLaughlin. There is the battle where McLaughlin is right now on the back bumper of Johnny Benson. That's an impressive run, too. He's handling quite well. He's moved right up on Benson. Benson's car seems to go away after about 20 laps there. On, after they have a restart, he's real good. He can keep up with the lead cars, and then he starts fading a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's probably a loose condition. Usually, they would can run fast for a few laps after car, tires cool off, you are usually a little loose. Kenny Wallace just going out of screen there as your leader. Johnny Benson and the Lipton T car in second. There you saw the differential. And now here's Terry Labonte up on the outside, going to lose a spot to Mike Wallace. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Terry looks like all of a sudden he slowed down. Ooh, lap car kept Mike from moving right underneath Jason Keller and on up. Yeah, and Chad Little's right there to go by uh, Terry too. And two laps ago, Little was trying Wallace on the outside, but found nothing there. Body is six. Oh, Terry's got a problem. That car won't stay on the bottom of the racetrack. He went in on the bottom lane and went straight up. It acts like it's got a tire going down. There goes the six by him. Hundred and fourteen laps to go. And here's your leader, Kenny Wallace. Wallace enjoys the lead of about fifteen car lengths on Johnny Benson and Mike McLaughlin. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Richmond. Mike Joy with Darrell Waltrip and Buddy Baker. Glenn Jarrett, Randy Pemberton, Larry McReynolds on pit road for TNN today. And watch race leader, Kenny Wallace. The four, you know, the 44 car is down the cylinder. We know that. And uh, he's still been able to hang on to the tail end of the lead lap. Well, Kenny Wallace is running super well. But just behind Kenny Wallace here, I mean his brother's making a run. He is now in third place. He just passed McLaughlin going in the corner to take over third place. He has got this thing in win. And just remember, Kenny Wallace took the lead just before halfway last September and led the rest of the way here. Let's uh, get today's AutoZone Tech Fact, brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, best parts in auto parts. Here's, oh, here's trouble in turn two. One car up and into the wall. That's Greg Clark. Second twirl of the day for the number 53. You know, you reported that the uh, 14 car of uh, Terry Labonte had a, a right front leaking down. This is a break for him. Well, it really is. Keeps him on the lead lap. Show you what happened to Greg Clark. Old shadow of New York driver. That's Phil Parsons under him. On, below the yellow line, he sweeps up just a little bit. A little contact there. Elton Sawyer going by on the inside. He has little. Everybody else gets past. And here they come. On to the pit lane. There's leader Kenny Wallace. Bill Mark crew. Randy's there. Jim Murray and the crew uh, were talking to Kenny previously. Kenny was complaining about being loose getting into the corner. So particularly going down into, into one. They're going to change all four tires. Jim Murray led through doing a fine job so far. No problems on the left side. Glenn, this pit stop zone is over. What's going on on pit road? Randy Johnny Benson has brought his car in and uh, crew chief, uh, chief Steve Bird called for four tires. That's what you're doing. Johnny reports that the car is a little bit tight, but they did not want to adjust it. He thought it would be okay. It wasn't too tight. Rather than that bad, they got them all four on. He's down and away. 28 and a half seconds. Uh, <laughs> did Benson beat Wallace out? We'll see how they call it. Now, 103 laps to go. Some of the teams reported they could run 90 to 94 laps on a pit stop. Yeah. Uh, I'd say they close. I'd say they can make it. Okay. 